lot easier, but I don't have those pieces of equipment, so you kind of got to do with what you work with, or with what, work with what you, how's it go? Work with what you have? There you go. Ha! Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So my next little project is going to be making a twin bed for my three-year-old daughter. Uh, my wife and I are expecting a little girl here in a couple months, and so we need to move my daughter out of her current bed into a twin bed because the new baby is going to be taking her bed, which is kind of one of those quick crib conversion, you know, crib into a little small bed. Uh, so we need to make her a uh, twin bed. So I'm going to think I'm going to put this together in a three-part series. The first part being uh, making the base that the mattress sits on. Uh, the next part, which will be part two, will be making the headboard. And then part three, we'll kind of put it all together and wrapping it up. Uh, so I think th this project for making the base, I think it's going to be a two, maybe maybe a th two and a half, maybe three on the one to five scale. One being easy, five being difficult. It's not too hard. I uh, need, need a couple tools, and we'll go over that here in a second. Uh, but it should, be, it should be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's go over our tools now. All right, so here's what we need tool-wise for this project. We'll need a miter chop saw, a drill, some clamps, a square, tape measure, some screws, a three inch screw, and an inch and a half screw, and then a drill bit for the three inch screw. So uh, that's it, and uh, let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I already cut my two by fours to length. Now these two by fours are the kiln dried two by fours, which means they kind of put them in a big oven and try to dry them out and get rid of that moisture as much as possible. A little bit easier to work with. And then my next thing I try to do is get some that has as few as knots as possible, because I am going to be painting this white in the end with primer and a, and a coat of paint. And sometimes that sap in those knots kind of bleeds through and it kind of looks bad. And also here's a tip when you're picking out two by fours is to pick one up and then kind of sight down it and see how straight it is and try to get some that are as straight as possible. It is hard. This one kind of has a little curve into it, um, but this is going to be my center support right here. So I'm not too worried about it. So I try to get the, use the best ones for the sides and the ends. So what I did is uh, the lengths on the ends are cut to six or 76 and a half. And then these end ones are 39 inches. So our next step is to screw this together and then square it up. And I'll show you how I, a little trick on squaring these up. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw all our corners together with our three inch screws. First, we're gonna pre-drill and you wanna pick out a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller in diameter uh, than your, your three inch screws. And you're gonna pre-drill uh, the short ends on each side and then we'll go ahead and drive our three inch screws in and then uh, I'll show you how to square this up. Alright, so I got all my corners screwed together. Next, we're going to square this up. Uh, so what we want to do is take a scrap piece of wood uh, and kind of make a triangle. What you're going to do is put a screw on either end, um, and I'll show you how to square it up. I'll bring you in here for a closer look. Alright, so to square up your bed frame, you take one corner, you take your square, and you put it in the corner. And the idea is that the square edges are going to touch the corner, inside corner of your bed on all locations. So I don't know if you can see in the camera, but down here it's not touching. And so what you want to do is take this piece at the other end and kick it out just a little bit so that way it's touching all the way across. And then once you have it touching all the way across, you put your scrap piece on and you screw it down and that will hold it square while you work on the rest of it. So that's kind of how you square up a big frame like this. So I'm going to go ahead and square this up and uh, we'll be back. 
All right, so there's the frame all squared up. Uh, kind of was a pain to square up. I had to put two um, braces at either end instead of opposite corners to get to square. This thing was a pain. Uh, if I was doing this the right way, I would run these two by fours through the joiner and then a planer to get them all true, flat, square, and all that stuff. It would have been a lot easier. But I don't have those pieces of equipment, so you kind of got to work with what you have. Um, and here's a tip. If you don't have a square, you would take a tape measure and go diagonal corners across. And the measurement that you get here should be the same measurement from that corner to that corner. That way you know it's squared up. So now we know it's squared up, the next thing we need to do uh, is put the feet on. All right, so I went ahead and cut my feet. My feet are six and a half inches long. Went ahead and pre-drilled two holes, just kind of like how we did the corners. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the short end of the bed. Use a clamp, put these on, and I'll kind of show you how I do it, and then uh, put all four of these guys on, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so here's a little close-up of the foot. This is the top of the foot. I left it an inch and a half down from the top of the bed frame, uh, and I'll show you why later on. I clamped it up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these two screws in, repeat this process on the other three feet, and I'll bring you back. Alrighty, I screwed up. I built this wrong, I wasn't paying attention. Um, and you can kind of see I, I fixed it just now and those are my old holes. Um, the way I originally had it was this long piece was in between these two short pieces and it's supposed to be the other way around which I have it now. So I fixed it, squared it back up and now we're ready to move on. So the next step is to go ahead and put the support pieces that run along the inside and they're gonna support the slats. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those and we'll attach them next. Alright, so I got the side supports cut. These are a 2x2 two two or an inch and a half by inch and a half. Um, got it all clamped up, ready to go, and it is flush with the bottom of the 2x4. So I'm going to get these screwed on and we'll be back. Alright, so I got the side supports on and went ahead and cut my slats. But I think I'm going to add one more support, 2x4 support, right down the middle here. Cause you know how kids are, they get on the bed and jump and these things are, aren't the strongest right here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a two x four support down the middle and put a little foot on it, uh, just to add a little bit more support. support. So I know these kids are gonna go and jump on the bed and I don't want it to break. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that together and then um, the next step would be to add a kind of a little top cap around here, um, just to add a, make a little bit cleaner look. All right, so there it is. Um, the center support is in. I screwed in, I put a little foot in there, you can't see it. And then I screwed in those slats. And I'll show you, I'll bring you in for a closer look on the feet and why they're down that inch and a half. All right, so this is why I have that foot an inch and a half down because this coming up, this inch and a half plus this, it makes it all level so that way the mattress will sit nice and flat and you won't see the foot. So that's, uh, that's kind of why um, that foot is an inch and a half down from the top of the 2x4, which is the top of the bed. All right, so now you can go ahead and take your corner support off. I already did, and it should stay square with everything kind of sc screwed together. So now what I want to do before I put that top cap on is I wanna take, I'm going to take my belt sander and clean up all these edges. I'll make them nice and smooth because I am going to paint them. It'll be a lot easier to do it now before I put that top cap on. So I'm gonna head and do that and we'll be back. All right, so I got it all sanded up and so our next step is to put this end cap on. This kind of gives it a finished look. I already went ahead and put the end, short end one on. Uh, when all I did was put a little bead of glue, uh, clamped it down and then um, countersunk some screws. So I have another tool to add to our list, which is a countersink and it kind of sinks the head of the screw below the surface of the wood that way we could go, come back later and fill that in a little bit and sand it and you won't you won't ever see it so this is um some pine that i got and it's already primed and it's free of knots which is pretty nice um so i went and got a couple pieces of this just because it's this is the part that's going to be seen the most so um so we'll get started I, i'll go ahead and put the two long pieces on and uh, i'll show you how, how that goes all right, so I got a bead of glue on there and I clamped it on there. So now I'm gonna take my drill with my countersink and drill a bunch of pre-drill pre a bunch of holes and then put some screws in there.
All right, guys, there it is, all finished up. Got the top cap on. All I have to do is put a little uh, filler in the screw holes and sand it down, and I think that'll take care of the base. Uh, so that's part one of this little series I'm putting together on making a twin bed. Uh, next video will be the headboard, making the headboard. So stay tuned for that, and until then, I will see you on the next one.